All right, welcome back. Uh, so we are going to focus on our first type of authentication uh, called anonymous authentication. If you read like very quickly when we were turning it on, um, it says enable anonymous guest accounts in your application to let you enforce security rules without requiring any credentials from your users. So that's kind of what anonymous auth is all about. To implement it, what we're going to do is we're going to actually just go into the password view controller um, and we're going to inside the view did load, we're just going to sign people in uh, right there. So let's just go ahead and open up our um, view controller. Uh, it's kind of hard to see all these things, but the password uh, view controller, there's a couple different view controllers. You can see that it's using things like UI kit and folding cell and material. We also want to be using Firebase, no shock there. And we're going to go find view did load. And what we're going to do is we're going to sign in Sign in anonymously, if not already signed in. Uh, what does that mean, not already signed in? Aren't they obviously not signed in? Firebase remembers if they're signed in or not. So they might already be signed in from the last time they were in this app. So we're gonna actually, actually look to see if they're already signed in. And if they're not, sign them in anonymously. All right, I'll see how well I remember my syntax here. So it's Firebase auth, I remember that much, dot. Uh, and then there's an object called auth. This is kind of similar to how the database works. And after you practice with their, their APIs for a while, you get better at them. So there, there's probably a thing called auth, um, depending on whether it's initialized or not. Um, and it's got on it a thing called current user. So if the current user is nil, so like if it doesn't exist, then we're going to have to sign in. If it does exist, we'll just go ahead and say, you are already signed in. Uh, if they're not signed in, we're just going to sign them in. That's the beauty of that's the beauty of anonymous auth, right? Um, so we're just going to say sign in user anonymously with completion handler. Uh, so I just go ahead and click on that by hitting enter. Uh, I just hit enter again to let it kind of auto complete some things here. Um, I think these are funny. They auto complete the type, but they don't actually give you a name uh, with them. So I'm just going to say user and error. Uh, seems like easy enough things. Also with closures, they get uh, <laughs> they get like really awkward in how they want to format themselves. I played with it a little bit more there on the formatting. Um, so sign in anonymously is nice because it really should just always work, right? I mean, if there is an error, so like if the error is not nil, um, you know, you could print a little error message like, you know, anonymous auth failed, uh, and then I'll just return if that happens, right? Um, I would not expect to ever see that message. Um, and then if it doesn't uh, get picked off there, it must have worked, right? So it would just say, uh, congratulations, you are now signed in anonymously. Woohoo, that was so exciting. Um, so if you run it now, um, it should actually do authentication, right? So it actually should sign you in um, as, as an anonymous user, which is kind of fun. Um, and sure enough, it says, you are now signed in anonymously. And you can actually see this on your back end, which is cool too. So not with this tab. Uh, let's try this one. It looks like I left it in kind of this state here. Yeah, I already did all that stuff. Um, and you can see this in your auth area. Um, and you can see that there's actually a user now that wasn't there before. Um, and he got a randomly generated user ID, uh, but I actually have a user inside of my app, which is kind of cool. Um, Let's do a little bit more with it than that. Uh, let's at least push something um, just so we can see that it worked. So um, regardless of which way they signed in, oh, I guess we should show the uh, you're already signed in. So if you stop it uh, and then you run it again, uh, you should actually get the other message. So you should get the you're already signed in. Anonymous auth is funny. Uh, it actually came up right there. Anonymous auth is funny because anytime you call that method sign in, it'll just give you a new UID, um, but it will remember it for quite a while. I'm sure there's some way I could make it forget it, um, but it does remember it for quite a while, which is kind of cool. So let's go ahead and have him do something. Now, I don't care which way he signed in. Uh, it could have been because he just signed in, um, or it could have been because he's already signed in. I want to like add listeners at this point. 
Um, and I'm going to call this uh, setup Firebase Observers because later this is where we're going to be setting up Firebase Observers, obviously. Uh, and that function doesn't exist yet. Uh, note that up here I'm inside of a closure, so I have to say self dot. Down here I'm not inside of a closure, so I don't have to say self dot. Um, but I do have to make the function uh, without the word self. So uh, regardless of how I get through, um, I want to say set up Firebase Observers, and now I can do stuff uh, down in this area and feel confident uh, that the person is signed in, which is neat. So what do I want to do? Uh, well, first off, I'm going to ultimately want a Firebase reference to a certain spot. So your first Firebase ref, uh, it can actually just be to uh, your default path. So you've got a database and you've got a reference. That would get you to the top level, uh, which, is, which is great and handy, but, but not what we want here. What we really want is we want the current user's UID. And now in order to get this, we need to say fur auth, uh, you have to type it correctly, dot auth uh, dot current user dot uh, UID. So that's what we ultimately want is their UID. Um, I know that there's a current user at this point, so I'm going to change these question marks to exclamation points. I know that I've got this person. And then what I want to do is I want to create a path um, to their specific space. I'm going to go and create a field. Uh, I'll just kind of do it somewhere up at the top here. Uh, I'll do it right, right before view did load. Uh, so I'm just going to say that there is a var called the current uh, user ref. Uh, and that is a for database reference. Um, and I'm just going to say it's an exclamation point uh, just because that says Swift, don't bother me. I promise you it'll be set up before you ever need it. Uh, and that's kind of my preferred way to work with optionals these days. Um, it makes it behave more like Java, which is great. Uh, and so down here, I'm going to say current uh, user ref uh, is equal to the Firebase ref uh, plus a couple children. Uh, so there's going to be one ch child for the user's path. So if you remember how we designed this data model, there's a user's path. I add this because it's better to put things not at the very top level. You don't want a bunch of users at the top level. You want to namespace them. That way, if you change your design later, you've actually got some, some like future proofing ready. Um, and then I also want to actually get uh, the current user's UID uh, drilled down from there. And then everything that this person can do is from that point down, right? So you can only see your own stuff. So I'm on the user's path. Um, and then I'm on their UID path. Just because I want to see something happen, I'm going to do a quick hack, right? So we'll just do a, a quick test. And so what we want to do is we just want to um, auto-generate an ID in Android or web, it's called push. In iOS, it's called child by auto ID. That basically is the same as dot child. It just gives you a dot child of an auto-generated key, which is kind of slick. Uh, and then we're going to set the value there. Um, I'm just going to, just because I'm trying to do something quick and dirty here, just going to make a dictionary, right? So this is a hard-coded test. Um, and then it also needs, I think username is optional, but password is required. Um, and so password, colon, uh, we'll just say blah, blah. Great, so it's kind of formatted there on the line breaks difficult, but I think you can kind of see what's going on. Uh, and that is that we're adding uh, a single movie quote, sorry, a single password. Um, and so when you run this, uh, it should actually modify your database, if I can get there before it's up, ah, uh, it's too fast. Um, and it should actually add uh, something to your beta database, which is cool. You won't see anything on the app, uh, but you can see that there's actually something uh, in your database now, which is cool. So things are working. The only reason it got up there is because it passed my rules. Uh, this is kind of fun to test for rules sometimes too. Uh, so let's just say we made it instead of uh, service, let's just say we called it service two, uh, and we said hard-coded test, uh, and we ran it again. Uh, this won't work, right? Because it won't get past our rules. Um, and so whenever it pops up, um, it should say yeah, permission denied, right? 
And so permission denied, uh, nothing got written for that. It did not pass our rules. Um, if you remember our rules, uh, I'll just kind of do another one here. It has to have a service, it has to have a password, they have to be signed in, um, and it all has to be happening in a space that they own. Uh, so here they added another one. Notice that it didn't blow away the other one because we're using that child by auto ID and it just kind of made another one for us. Um, remembering your rules, just kind of briefly, um, you have to be authenticated, uh, you have to be currently signed in as the person that's on this path, so these two things have to match. It has to have a service, has to have a password, and then optionally, it can have a username or not, right? So it's just kind of neat. All right, I think that's what we got for this time. Uh, we've now proven that we can send things up. Uh, we've proven that we can sign in. Admittedly, it's anonymously. Uh, and my quick test I'm now done with, uh, and I'll come back and do more real things uh, next time. Okay, I think that's it for this time. I'll see you next time when we start doing some more real things. See you then. Bye. Mm -hmm.